In today's message, we're going to talk about something that I know many of you are struggling with, feeling stuck and unable to make progress towards your goals. It's a common struggle, and I want you to know that you are not alone. I've been there too, and I understand the frustration and disappointment that comes with it. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you have taken the first step towards turning things around. You have shown the willingness to learn and grow, and that is the key to getting unstuck and making progress towards your goals. So congratulations on taking this step, my friends. Now, let's dive into the five ways that will help you break through the barriers and achieve the success you desire. Are you ready? Let's begin. Starting with number five, my friends, if you can master this fifth way, you will be well on your way to achieving all of your dreams and aspirations. So what is this fifth way, you may ask? It is quite simple yet incredibly powerful. The fifth way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to stay committed and consistent. Now, I know what you may be thinking. Jim, that's easier said than done. How can I possibly stay committed and consistent when life throws me curveballs and obstacles? And to that, I say this. It all starts with your mindset. You see, my friends, commitment and consistency are not just actions. They are a state of mind. It is a mindset that you must cultivate and nurture in order to achieve success. The first step in developing this mindset is to understand the power of your thoughts. Your thoughts are the driving force behind your actions. If you think negatively, you will act negatively. But if you think positively, you will act positively. So, my friends, I urge you to start monitoring your thoughts. Pay attention to the words you speak to yourself and the beliefs you hold about yourself. Are they positive or negative? Are they helping or hindering your progress? Remember, your thoughts have the power to shape your reality. So make sure you are feeding your mind with positive thoughts and beliefs that will keep you committed and consistent on your journey towards success. But it's not just about positive thinking. It's also about having a clear and specific vision for your goals. You must know exactly what it is that you want to achieve and why you want to achieve it. This will give you a sense of purpose and drive which will keep you committed and consistent in the face of challenges and setbacks. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So make sure you have a clear destination in mind and stay focused on it. Now, I want to address something that often holds people back from staying committed and consistent, and that is the fear of failure. Many of us have a fear of failing, of not being good enough, of not living up to our own expectations. But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not something to be feared. In fact, it is an essential part of the journey towards success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. So I urge you to embrace failure, embrace it as a necessary stepping stone towards your goals. And when you do fail, which you inevitably will, don't let it discourage you. Instead, use it as a learning opportunity and keep moving forward. Remember, it is not about how many times you fall, but how many times you get back up and keep going. Another key aspect of staying committed and consistent is to have a plan in place. You must have a roadmap that will guide you towards your goals. This plan should include specific actions and milestones that you will take to make progress towards your goals. And most importantly, it should be flexible. Life is unpredictable, and your plan may need to be adjusted along the way. But as long as you have a plan, you will have a clear direction and a sense of purpose. But having a plan is not enough. You must also take action. You must be willing to put in the work and make sacrifices to achieve your goals. As the saying goes, the road to success is always under construction. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it. So, my friends, I urge you to take action every single day towards your goals, even if it's just a small step. It will keep you moving forward and bring you closer to your dreams. And finally, I want to touch on the importance of accountability. It is crucial to have someone or something that holds you accountable for your actions. This could be a mentor, a coach, a friend, or even a journal. When you have someone or something to answer to, you are more likely to stay committed and consistent. And remember, it's not just about being accountable to others, but also to yourself. Hold yourself accountable for your actions, and you will see how much progress you can make. Now, to number four. 
The fourth way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to learn from setbacks and failures. Now, I know what you're thinking. Failures, setbacks. That doesn't sound very motivating, does it? But let me tell you, my friends, it is in those moments of failure and setback that we truly learn and grow. It is in those moments that we are forced to reevaluate our actions and make necessary changes in order to move forward. You see, setbacks and failures are not signs of weakness or defeat. They are simply opportunities for growth and improvement. As the great Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And that, my friends, is the key to learning from setbacks and failures, having the courage to continue. So how do we learn from setbacks and failures? How do we turn those moments of disappointment into opportunities for growth? Well, the first step is to change our mindset. Instead of viewing setbacks and failures as something to be ashamed of, we must view them as valuable learning experiences. Think about it. Every successful person you know has faced setbacks and failures. But what sets them apart is their ability to learn from those experiences and use them to their advantage. They don't let failures define them, but rather they use them as stepping stones towards success. The second step is to take responsibility. It's easy to blame external factors for our failures, the economy, our boss, our circumstances. But the truth is, we are ultimately responsible for our own success or failure. And when we take responsibility, we take back control of our lives and our future. The third step is to reflect and analyze. When we face a setback or failure, it's important to take a step back and reflect on what went wrong. What actions did we take that led to this outcome? What could we have done differently? By analyzing our mistakes, we can learn from them and make better choices in the future. The fourth step is to keep going. As I mentioned earlier, it takes courage to continue after a setback or failure. But that is exactly what we must do. We must pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and keep moving forward. As long as we keep going, we are making progress towards our goals. And the fifth and final step is to use setbacks and failures as motivation. Let them fuel your fire and drive you towards success. Use them as a reminder of where you started on this journey in the first place. And when you do achieve success, you can look back at those moments and be proud of how far you have come. Now, I know that learning from setbacks and failures is not easy. It takes resilience, determination, and a strong mindset. But let me tell you, my friends, it is worth it. Because when we learn from our failures, we become stronger, wiser, and more equipped to handle any challenges that come our way. Now, to number three. The third way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is by surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. Now, I know some of you may be thinking, Jim, that sounds like common sense. Of course, we should surround ourselves with positive and supportive people. And you're right, it is common sense. But as my mentor Earl Schaff used to say, common sense is not always common practice. So today, I want to remind you of the power of your environment and the people you choose to surround yourself with. You see, we are greatly influenced by the people we spend the most time with. As the famous motivational speaker Les Brown once said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that for a moment. Who are the five people you spend the most time with? Are they positive and supportive individuals who uplift and inspire you? Or are they negative and toxic individuals who drain your energy and hold you back? Now, I understand that sometimes we can't choose our family or co-workers. But we can choose our friends and the activities we engage in outside of work. And that is where we must be intentional about surrounding ourselves with positive and supportive people. Positive and supportive people have a contagious energy. They radiate positivity and their enthusiasm is infectious. Just being around them can lift your spirits and motivate you to take action towards your goals. They believe in you, and their belief can be the fuel that propels you forward. On the other hand, negative and toxic people have a draining energy. They complain, criticize, and bring others down with their pessimism. Being around them can leave you feeling depleted and demotivated. They may even try to discourage you from pursuing your goals, as they are often afraid to take risks themselves. And if you're not careful, their negativity can seep into your mind and hold you back from reaching your full potential. 
So the question is, how do we surround ourselves with positive and supportive people? Well, it starts with being intentional about the relationships we cultivate. We must be selective about who we allow into our inner circle and the activities we engage in. First and foremost, we must be positive and supportive ourselves. As the saying goes, you attract what you are, not what you want. If we want to attract positive and supportive people, we must first embody those qualities ourselves. We must be the kind of person we want to surround ourselves with. Secondly, we must seek out like-minded individuals. Look for people who share similar values, goals, and interests. These are the people who will understand and support your journey. They will also challenge and inspire you to become the best version of yourself. Next, we must be willing to let go of toxic relationships. This can be a difficult and uncomfortable process, but it is necessary for our growth and well-being. As the saying goes, sometimes you have to let go of the old to make room for the new, and that applies to relationships as well. If someone is constantly bringing you down and hindering your progress, it may be time to distance yourself from them. Additionally, we must be open to meeting new people. Sometimes we can get stuck in our routines and only interact with the same group of people. But by stepping out of our comfort zone and meeting new people, we open ourselves up to new perspectives and opportunities. Attend networking events, join a club or organization, or even strike up a conversation with someone new at the gym. You never know who you might meet and how they may impact your life. And finally, we must be willing to be vulnerable and ask for help. It takes courage to admit that we need support, but it is essential for our growth. Don't be afraid to reach out to a mentor, coach, or friend for guidance and encouragement. Remember, we are not meant to do this journey alone. We all need support and guidance along the way. Now, to number two. I am here to tell you that the number two way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals is to take action and start small. You see, many of us have big dreams and aspirations, but we often get stuck in the planning phase. We spend hours, days, and weeks creating the perfect plan, but we fail to take action. We wait for the perfect moment, the perfect opportunity, the perfect circumstances. But let me tell you, my friends, there is no such thing as a perfect moment. The only moment we have is right now, and it is up to us to make the most of it. So what does it mean to take action and start small? It means to take that first step towards your goal, no matter how small it may seem. It means to stop waiting for the perfect moment and start creating your own perfect moment. It means to have the courage to step out of your comfort zone and into the unknown. It means to have faith in yourself and your abilities. You see, success is not about making big leaps. It is about taking small steps consistently. It is about building momentum and staying committed to your goals. And the best way to do that is to start small. Let me give you an example. If your goal is to lose 50 pounds, don't try to do it all at once. Start by making small changes in your diet and exercise routine. Maybe start by cutting out sugary drinks or going for a 15-minute walk every day. These small actions may seem insignificant, but they add up over time. And before you know it, you will have reached your goal. Another reason why it is important to start small is that it helps us build confidence. When we take small actions and see results, it gives us the confidence to take bigger actions. It is like building a muscle. You start with light weights and gradually increase as you get stronger. The same goes for our goals. We start with small actions and gradually increase as we gain momentum and confidence. But I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, what if I fail? What if I take action and it doesn't work out? My friends, failure is a part of the journey to success. It is not something to be feared but rather embraced. Because every failure brings with it a valuable lesson and an opportunity to grow. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So, my friends, do not let the fear of failure hold you back from taking action and starting small. Now, I know that taking action and starting small may seem simple, but let me tell you, it is not easy. It takes discipline, commitment, and perseverance. It means showing up every day, even when you don't feel like it. It means pushing through the obstacles and setbacks. But I can assure you, my friends, that the rewards are worth it. So how do we take action and start small? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. 
set specific and measurable goals for yourself, write them down, and review them every day. This will keep you focused and motivated. The next step is to create a plan of action. Break down your goals into smaller, manageable tasks. This will make it easier for you to take action and stay on track. And remember, it is okay to adjust your plan as you go along. The important thing is to keep moving forward. And finally, my friends, the most important step is to take action. Do not wait for the perfect moment. Create your own perfect moment. Take that first step, no matter how small it may seem, and then take another step, and another, and another. Before you know it, you will have made significant progress towards your goals. Now, to number one. And after years of research and personal experience, I can confidently say that the key to achieving your goals lies in one simple word, planning. You see, we all have dreams and desires. We all have goals that we want to achieve, whether it's to become financially independent, start a successful business, or improve our health and relationships. We all have something that we want to accomplish, but often, we find ourselves stuck, unable to move forward and make progress towards our goals. We get caught up in the daily grind. We get distracted by the latest trends and fads, and we lose sight of what truly matters. But I am here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. You have the power to break free from the chains of mediocrity and create a life that is filled with purpose and meaning. And it all starts with a clear and specific plan. Now, I know that planning may not sound like the most exciting or glamorous thing, but let me tell you, it is the foundation of all success. Without a plan, you are like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. But with a plan, you have a direction, a purpose, and a roadmap to guide you towards your destination. So how do you create a clear and specific plan? Let me share with you the steps that have worked for me and countless others who have achieved their goals and dreams. Step 1. Define your goal. The first step in creating a plan is to clearly define your goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Be specific and write it down. Whether it's to lose 20 pounds, save $10,000, or start your own business, write it down and make it tangible. Step 2. Set a deadline. Next, set a deadline for when you want to achieve your goal. This will create a sense of urgency and motivate you to take action. Without a deadline, your goal will remain a distant dream, always just out of reach. Step 3. Break it down into smaller actionable steps. Now that you have a clear goal and a deadline, it's time to break it down into smaller actionable steps. This will make your goal more manageable and less overwhelming. For example, if your goal is to save $10,000, you can break it down into saving $1,000 each month for the next 10 months. Step 4. Create a timeline. Once you have your smaller steps, create a timeline for when you will complete each one. This will help you stay on track and ensure that you are making progress towards your goal. It's important to be realistic with your timeline, but also push yourself to stay accountable and motivated. Step 5. Identify potential obstacles and solutions. No plan is foolproof, and there will always be obstacles and challenges along the way. But the key is to identify them beforehand and come up with solutions to overcome them. This will prevent you from getting derailed and keep you focused on your goal. Step 6. Take action and review your progress. Now that you have a clear and specific plan, it's time to take action. Remember, a plan is only effective if you put it into action. And as you make progress towards your goal, be sure to review your plan regularly and make any necessary adjustments. My friends, this may seem like a simple and straightforward process, but I assure you, it is the most powerful tool you have in achieving your goals and getting unstuck. It's not about having the perfect plan. It's about taking action and making progress towards your dreams. As we move into our next topic of personal development, I urge you to take this number one way to get unstuck and make progress towards your goals and apply it to all areas of your life, whether it's your career, relationships, health, or finances. A clear and specific plan will be your guiding light towards success. Before we go, I want to leave you with this quote from Benjamin Franklin. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So go forth and create your plan, and I have no doubt that you will achieve greatness and live a life of purpose and fulfillment. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here with you today to share a compelling message on transitioning from a mindset of scarcity to one of abundance in today's fast-paced world. 
It's easy to become ensnared in the daily grind and feel trapped in a cycle of financial hardship. But let me assure you, you are not alone. Many individuals face similar challenges and wonder how to break free from the constraints of a scarcity mindset. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not only possible but also within your reach. By tuning into this message, you're taking the crucial first step toward transforming your circumstances. Over the years, I've delved into the habits and mindsets of successful individuals, discovering that it all begins with our thoughts and beliefs. In this video, I'll outline five effective methods to shift your mindset from one of lack and scarcity to one of abundance and prosperity. These are actionable steps that you can start implementing in your life today. So, prepare to open your mind and release any limiting beliefs because it's time to unlock your full potential and manifest the life of your dreams. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Starting with number five, which involves transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by practicing gratitude. You might be wondering, what does gratitude have to do with achieving wealth? The answer is quite simple, my friends. Gratitude serves as the gateway to abundance and prosperity. When we find ourselves immersed in scarcity, it's natural to fixate on what we lack, leading to a perpetual cycle of inadequacy. However, by cultivating gratitude, we redirect our focus towards what we do possess. We become cognizant of the blessings and abundance already present in our lives, thereby attracting more of the same. It's akin to a magnet drawing in positivity and abundance. Now, you might protest, but I don't have much to be grateful for. I'm struggling to make ends meet, and it feels like I have nothing. I understand your perspective, but let me remind you that gratitude transcends material possessions and financial triumphs. It's about appreciating life's simple pleasures, the air we breathe, the love of our families, the opportunities at our disposal, and the lessons we learn. Gratitude is a mindset, a lens through which we view the world, uncovering the silver lining in every situation. Moreover, gratitude isn't merely about feeling good, it's about taking action. When we cultivate gratitude, we're inclined to nurture what we have, invest in ourselves and our future, and magnetize opportunities for growth and success. Therefore, I challenge you to embrace gratitude as a daily ritual. Each morning, before embarking on your day's journey, take a moment to reflect on the abundance in your life. Similarly, before retiring for the night, ponder upon the day's blessings. This simple practice has the power to revolutionize your mindset and, consequently, your life. Allow me to introduce a potent exercise for nurturing gratitude, the Gratitude Journal. Every day, jot down at least three things you're thankful for. Whether it's a stranger's smile, a modest meal, or a promotion at work, specificity is key. As you inscribe these blessings, immerse yourself in the genuine emotion of gratitude. I've personally adopted this practice for years, witnessing its profound impact on my life. It's kept me grounded and optimistic, even amidst adversity, when unveiling the abundance that surrounds me. Friends, I cannot overstate the significance of gratitude. It serves as the cornerstone of a prosperous mindset. As you continue to cultivate this mindset, you'll naturally attract more abundance and success into your life. Moving on to number four, let's explore transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by taking calculated risks. What precisely do I mean by calculated risks? I'm referring to strategic leaps that have been meticulously planned and analyzed, not haphazard ventures devoid of strategy or purpose. Achieving success demands stepping beyond your comfort zone, embracing the unknown, and seizing opportunities for growth and advancement. Allow me to illustrate this principle with a personal anecdote. During my youth, I toiled as a stock clerk at a grocery store, barely scraping by. However, I yearned for more, a desire that impelled me to invest a mere $5 in a personal development seminar. That modest investment catalyzed a seismic shift in my life, unveiling a realm of possibilities and opportunities hitherto unseen. Henceforth, I committed to nurturing my personal growth and embracing calculated risks to realize my aspirations. I'm not insinuating that every risk yields success, but rather that abstaining from risks ensures perpetual mediocrity. Indeed, the greatest risk in life is avoiding risk altogether, resigning oneself to a life of complacency and security, devoid of fulfillment and accomplishment. Granted, venturing into the unknown may evoke trepidation, 
that the dividends, lessons learned, experiences gained, and successes attained far outweigh the initial apprehension. So, how does one embark on calculated risks? Firstly, delineate your goals and aspirations. What do you ardently desire in life? Visualize your objectives, chart a course of action, and commit to its realization. Subsequently, assess the potential risks and rewards. Contemplate the best and worst case scenarios, gauging whether the risk aligns with your aspirations. Thirdly, arm yourself with knowledge and insight. Educate yourself on the risks at hand, consulting individuals who've treaded similar paths. Finally, trust your intuition and take decisive action. Believe in your capacity to navigate challenges and embark on your journey with unwavering resolve. Remember, success isn't a terminus, it's a voyage. Embracing calculated risks distinguishes the ordinary from the extraordinary, paving the path to a mindset of abundance and a life replete with prosperity. Transitioning to number three, let's discuss transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by surrounding yourself with successful individuals. Undoubtedly, your mindset is the linchpin of your success. It shapes your thoughts, actions, and outcomes. Thus, fostering a mindset of abundance is imperative, and one potent catalyst for this transformation is your social milieu. But what precisely constitutes a mindset of abundance? It's a perspective teeming with prospects, characterized by growth, abundance, and optimism. It reveres diligence, perseverance, and resilience, shunning the shackles of fear and complacency. Contrary to popular belief, success transcends material wealth. It encompasses fulfillment, purpose, and positive impact. So, why is it paramount to all but oneself with accomplished individuals? Primarily, success begets success. By aligning yourself with triumphant individuals, you're exposed to their mindset, habits, and comportment. Humans are inherently imitative. We subconsciously assimilate the traits of those we frequent. Consequently, by surrounding yourself with success, you're more inclined to emulate their outlook and practices, catalyzing your own success. Moreover, successful individuals serve as invaluable mentors and role models. Success leaves clues, and you're better to decipher them than those who've traversed the path you aspire to. Seasoned veterans can furnish you with insights, counsel, and perspectives gleaned from their odyssey, propelling you closer to your aspirations. Furthermore, your social milieu augments your network and opportunities. Success seldom unfolds in solitude. It's often a collaborative endeavor. By congregating with accomplished individuals, you forge alliances with kindred spirits, fostering collaborations and alliances that enrich your journey. Indeed, the adage holds true, your network is your net worth. But you might contend, I hail from humble beginnings, devoid of connections or affluence. Allow me to dispel this fallacy. Success knows no socioeconomic stratum. It's attainable to all who are willing to toil and consort with the right cohort. Successful individuals hail from diverse backgrounds, but they share a common thread, an abundance mindset. And you, too, can cultivate this mindset by aligning yourself with the triumphant. So, how does one rendezvous with success? Firstly, partake in events, conferences, and seminars germane to your pursuits. These forums furnish opportunities to encounter accomplished individuals and glean insights from their exploits. Don't demur from initiating discourse. Solicit their wisdom and absorb their sagacity. Secondly, immerse yourself in clubs, organizations, or collectives resonant with your aspirations. These bastions harbor kindred souls, fostering an environment conducive to growth and collaboration. By mingling with like-minded individuals, you fortify your resolve and amplify your prospects. Thirdly, imbibe wisdom from literature, podcasts, and interviews featuring luminaries in your field. Leverage social media to engage with these luminaries, soliciting their guidance and insights. Remember, knowledge knows no bounds. Embrace every avenue of erudition. Lastly, be audacious. Transcend your comfort zone and embrace uncertainty. The dividends of venturing beyond familiarity outweigh the ephemeral pangs of trepidation. Trust in your resilience and potential, and embark on your quest for abundance with unwavering resolve. In summation, fostering an abundance mindset is contingent upon your social milieu. By congregating with success and absorbing their wisdom, you cultivate the mindset requisite for triumph. 
Transitioning to number two, let's delve into transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset through education. Education is the linchpin of enlightenment. It propels us towards self-actualization and empowers us to surmount adversity. While formal education is one avenue, education transcends the confines of academia. It's a lifelong odyssey of erudition and discovery. Why is education indispensable for nurturing an abundance mindset? Knowledge equips us with the acumen to discern opportunities amidst adversity, enabling us to navigate life's labyrinth with perspicacity and poise. As the adage of verse, knowledge is power. It furnishes us with the wherewithal to surmount obstacles and unlock our latent potential. Moreover, education fosters critical thinking, a quintessential trait for navigating life's vicissitudes. Through education, we hone our analytical faculties, fortifying our capacity to scrutinize information and extrapolate insights. Consequently, we're better equipped to make informed decisions, catalyzing our personal and professional growth. But what if you've been deprived of a formal education? Fear not, for education is ubiquitous. It permeates every facet of existence. Whether perusing literature, engaging in discourse, or gleaning wisdom from mentors, opportunities for erudition abound. As exemplified by luminaries like Oprah Winfrey, whose indomitable spirit transcended her humble origins, education is within reach of all who dare to seize it. So, how can one commence their educational odyssey? Firstly, cultivate an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Approach life with inquisitiveness, perpetually questing for enlightenment and elucidation. Secondly, be deliberate in your pursuit of erudition. Dedicate time each day to reading, listening to podcasts, or partaking in online courses. Cast your net wide, embracing a multiplicity of disciplines to foster a holistic worldview. Thirdly, immerse yourself in a milieu of learning. Surround yourself with erudite individuals who embody a commitment to lifelong learning. Their zeal will kindle your own, propelling you towards intellectual ascendancy. Lastly, apply the knowledge you accrue. As Plato opined, knowledge which is acquired under compulsion has no hold on the mind. Act upon your insights, transmuting them into tangible outcomes that enrich your life and those around you. By imbuing your endeavors with erudition, you propel yourself towards the zenith of personal and professional fulfillment. In summation, education serves as the cornerstone of an abundance mindset, endowing us with the cognitive arsenal requisite for triumph. Transitioning to our pinnacle, let's elucidate transitioning from a scarcity to an abundance mindset by harnessing the power of attitude. Attitude, the quintessence of our psyche, exerts an indelible influence on our trajectory. While external circumstances may fluctuate, our attitude remains a bastion of sovereignty, a potent force that shapes our reality. But what exactly constitutes a mindset of abundance? It's an ethos suffused with optimism, resilience, and audacity, a weltanschauung that perceives opportunities amidst adversity, imbuing life with purpose and vitality. Contrarywise, a scarcity mindset begets despondency, constraining our potential and stifling our aspirations. So, how does one transcend scarcity and embrace abundance? It begins with a shift in attitude, a conscious choice to cultivate optimism, gratitude, and fortitude. Allow me to delineate the steps to fostering a mindset of abundance. 1. Awareness. Asterisk, asterisk, acknowledge your prevailing attitude, whether it veers towards scarcity or abundance. Awareness is the harbinger of change, catalyzing transformation through introspection and reflection. 2. Gratitude. Asterisk, asterisk, cultivate an attitude of gratitude, recognizing life's blessings amidst adversity. By embracing gratitude, you transmute scarcity into abundance, inviting prosperity and fulfillment into your life. 3. Positive self-talk. Asterisk, asterisk, monitor your inner dialogue, replacing self-criticism with self-compassion and encouragement. Positivity breeds resilience, fortifying your resolve to surmount obstacles and manifest your aspirations. 4. Social milieu. Asterisk, asterisk, surround yourself with individuals who embody an attitude of abundance. Their positivity and resilience will inspire and uplift you, propelling you towards personal and professional triumph. 5. Embrace challenges. Asterisk, asterisk, view challenges as opportunities for growth, reframing setbacks as stepping stones to success. By embracing adversity with fortitude and resilience, you transcend scarcity, ushering in a realm of boundless potential. 
In conclusion, transitioning from scarcity to abundance is contingent upon a paradigm shift, a conscious choice to embrace optimism, resilience, and audacity. By harnessing the power of attitude, you unleash the latent potential within, catalyzing a transformational journey towards abundance and fulfillment.